Is construction workers make a big find underneath Research Stadium. Also, got a late night sweet tooth? Get fresh donuts delivered to your door. And how are OSU football players giving back to the community? All that and more coming up. Hello and welcome to the Beaver News. I'm EJ Alba. And I'm Kiana Hatch. Thank you for joining us this evening. Students should be on the lookout for a man that the Corvallis police consider dangerous. It was reported that a male hitchhiker was picked up by a woman at a grocery store along Philomath Boulevard and 53rd Avenue Wednesday morning. The hitchhiker forced her to drive to Avery Park where he robbed her, but no weapons were displayed. The suspect's last known location was on Circle K on the 99 West. The suspect is described as a white man in his 30s having a dark, close-cut beard and was last seen wearing a blue, puffy coat while carrying a greenish-brown backpack. If you see this person, immediately call Corvallis Police. Renovation workers made an amazing discovery in Research Stadium directly under the north end zone on Monday afternoon. Here is Cassidy Wood with more information. Wood and I am coming to you reporting from Research Stadium covering the story on the bones that have everyone talking. Directly underneath the north end zone, Oregon State's anthropology department scored this Monday. The preserved bone of a mammoth believed to be over 10,000 years old was found on Research Stadium. Dr. Lauren Davis, an associate professor of anthropology at Oregon State, was called in to appraise the discovery. I was contacted um, with the um, mentioned that they had discovered some large bone down on the end zone complex. So I came over and took a look at it. The most impressive piece recovered is believed to be a femur bone of a mammoth. Further digging revealed more bones from several extinct mammals, including bison and possibly camel or horse. We did go down and look at the bone and it was pretty clear right away this wasn't something that was just your average, someone buried a cow. Uh, what we could see right away, they had exposed an area about uh, roughly, you know, five feet by four feet, and it looked like there was a piece of a shoulder blade, a scapula, and then some uh, pieces also potentially of what would have been the radius uh, and ulna, uh, and maybe a piece of a, fem or, or, sorry, humerus. Dr. Davis is excited about the educational opportunities that these fossils represent. Undergraduate students will be able to participate in the studying of these remains. And that's all from me today here at Reser. Thank you for watching, Beaver Nation. Wow, did you see the size of that femur? Who would have thought it'd be underneath Reser Stadium? That thing was huge. Maybe that's why we couldn't score a touchdown. Oh. <laughs> Coming up after the break, Benny's Donuts is satisfying sweet tooths on one delivery at a time. Also, see what football players are doing to give back to the Corvallis community. We'll be right back. We're here to answer any questions, escort students around. We really just give them the sense of tradition. Um, we help them register for classes. A big part of being a start leader is showing students around OSU and helping them get a feel for what it's like when they're here at Oregon State. We serve to help them make a more smooth and positive transition from high school life to college life and to everything involved with it. Welcome back to the Beaver News. Benny Ajiri, an OSU grad, recently launched Benny's Donuts, a donut delivery service. We had the opportunity to sit down with him and learn all the ins and outs of his new company. When Benny was just a junior, he began to test and try out different recipes until finding the perfect one. Mixed together, like a donut mix with a family recipe, so we just combined them by accident. Right. We're like, this is the best donut I've ever had. Like other successful businesses in Corvallis, Benny knows it's important to involve the community. He believes in hiring college students and people who want to invest their time in his company. I kind of learned, like, surround yourself with good people, because I work with some not-so-fun people. Yeah. And that is how my, like, awesome friends really helping me. Like, there, there's no way, not a single chance I could do this without them. Yeah. Benny makes his advertising strategies fun by getting college students involved all over campus. Um, I try to make it more fun. Like one one night, I did uh, take take the best selfie with the with your delivery driver, get a free dozen. 
Benny's business is based out of Oregon State Advantage Accelerated Office. This program helps him to become successful. It's funded through the research office. Like really experienced people in the community help you, or like you have access to this. You can ask some questions. Everyone needs like a delicious donut once in a while. This has been Natalie Braun with Beaver News. Benny's late night delivery service will soon be extending to Southtown, also with the hopes of opening a storefront downtown. If you haven't tried one of these delicious donuts yet, make sure you go online and submit that order tonight. <laughs> I sure have. I mean, <laughs> I'm not one to pass up a donut. <laughs> okay, don't be too hard on yourself now. Well, I do go to the gym a lot. <laughs> Oregon State football has been using their time on the weekends to give back to the community. Sarah Allman caught up with the football players to see what project they've been working on. Back to the community. Today they are helping to paint a house for our family through Habitat for Humanity. My name is Jenna Baker. I'm the program coordinator at Benton Habitat for Humanity. We have OSU football out here today. We're super excited. This is probably the most amount of volunteers we've had on the build site this year. They are helping us completely finish painting the house so that the family can move in in the next couple months. I'm here with Jordan Millman today. Um, so tell us what you're doing here today. Uh, right now we just uh, paint right now. Uh, we have to do a second coat because it's been raining a lot here, but uh, we're painting. They're doing some power saws and stuff like that. And other than that, we're just uh, trying to make this house nice. What does it mean to you guys to be part of something, um, giving back to a family in need? Well, it's just like a good thing to do for your community, and uh, we're happy to do it. Really happy just to give back to these people and this family in this house, and we like to do this. Because. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, you know, Saturday, it's fun to actually get out here in the community and actually do something. Um, the family's here, we got to meet them, you know, take some pictures and hang out with the kids. So it's great to kind of see the impact that we actually have. Um, and, you know, it's been each week we, we go through a lot of work, you know, workouts and school, and studying and training and everything, and then the weekend comes, we kind of just want to relax. And you know, the middle of the week, the last thing you're thinking about is community service on Saturday. But once you actually, you know, you get on the bus and you get here, and everyone's here, all your teammates are here, it really does have an impact on like you and the people you're doing it with. And it makes you feel good, and um, you know, it's totally worth it. Coming up after the break. Which artists do students want to see at Dam Jam? Find out when we return. Many terms, yet the ones that stand out are lazy, entitled, and overall unambitious. But are we? We are the future leaders of innovation, and it's time to come out behind the screen. I know you've heard it all before that college students are faced with an abundance of rising debt. But what if there was a way to save thousands of dollars every year? Would you do it? Our generation is the lowest voter demographic. In 2014, a U.S. Census stated that the number one reason we did not vote is because we're too busy. Yet, for the minutes it takes to vote, we spend seven and a half hours in front of a screen daily. Politicians are not likely to represent the ideals and beliefs of the lowest voter demographic. Apart, change is near impossible. Yet if we work together, they could not ignore our acknowledgement. Students and parents, tuition is rising every year, so do something about it. Unemployment is rising every year, so do something about it. If you don't like something in your legislation, do something about it. Voting is the key to change, and together we can break the cycle and change history. Do something about it. Dam Jam is one of the highlights of spring term, and we wanted to know who students want to perform this year. I went out to the quad to see which artists students like to jam to. So, you know the five options. You've seen the polls on Facebook. We all have. If you could have anybody at Dam Jam, who would it be and why? I'm going to go ahead and say uh, Ray Shremard. Uh, he's produced some bangers. I'd love to go hard to that. That'd be great. Wouldn't we all? 
And Zach? I'm Andy Grammer because, you know, you always got to keep your head up, so. Whoa. Probably Ray. Why? I don't know. I know a lot of his songs. Like, like what? Um, like, like, imp like, just give me a little of, of a song. Doesn't he sing, like, No Flex Zone? How does that one go? It's like, No Flex Zone. No Flex. I'm not going to Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think that's how it goes. That's pretty good. <laughs> Do you know any other ones? Um, the one that's like, Somebody Come Get Her. She's dancing like a stripper. Ah, yes, of course. It's a good one. Fun for the whole family. Which would you say is your favorite and why? Uh, Ray Schremmerd is my pick. I think that No Flex Zone and Somebody Come Get Her really like, uh, encompasses the dynamic of the university life. All right, ladies. Damn Jim is coming up. We've got five choices. Who do you want to be the artist that performs? T-Pain. T-Pain. <laughs> T-Pain. <laughs> T-Pain. T-Pain. Now, of those five, or possibly your own other option, who would you want and why? Probably T Pain. Yeah. Shoddy snapping, right? <laughs> Buy you a drink, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Who do you guys want to be the headliner? Uh, T Pain. I think we know who we want. T Pain. T Pain. T Pain. <laughs> we got Dam Jam coming up. Are you excited? I never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a T? T. Can I get a Pain? Pain. T Pain. Michael would like to give a special shout out. Uh, this one's for the Panthers and uh, Cam Newton. And that's a wrap, folks. That was pretty fun, not going to lie to you. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing T-Pain. That'd, that'd be pretty fun. I think he'd get the, get the crowd pretty hyped. What that's do you think? That's personally who I want to see. I want the majority. I want to see T-Pain out there. Yeah, he'd be a fun one. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. I'm EJ Alba. And I'm Kiana Hatch. For more Beaver News, remember to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and watch us on YouTube. We'll see you next week, and stay tuned for Beaver Sports Show coming up next. We're here to answer any questions, escort students around. We really just give them the sense of tradition. Um, we help them register for classes. A big part of being a start leader is showing students around OSU and helping them get a feel for what it's like when they're here at Oregon State. We serve to help them make a more smooth and positive transition from high school life to college life and to everything involved with it. Our generation has been described in many terms, yet the ones that stand out are lazy, entitled, and overall unambitious. But are we? We are the future leaders of innovation, and it's time to come out behind the screen. I know you've heard it all before, that college students are faced with an abundance of rising debt. But what if there was a way to save thousands of dollars every year? Would you do it? Our generation is the lowest voter demographic. In 2014, a U.S. Census stated that the number one reason we did not vote is because we're too busy. Yet, for the minutes it takes to vote, we spend seven and a half hours in front of a screen daily. Politicians are not likely to represent the ideals and beliefs of the lowest voter demographic. Apart, change is near impossible. Yet, if we work together, they cannot ignore our acknowledgement. Students and parents, tuition is rising every year, so do something about it. Unemployment is rising every year, so do something about it. If you don't like something in your legislation, do something about it. Voting is the key to change, and together we can break the cycle and change history. Do something about it. Hi, my name is T. 
Anthony T. Eddie Sonny Cardenas. Sonny Sonny Love. Alex Lickery Holland. Laura Gordon. Lisa Rosenthal. We're here to answer any questions, escort students around. We really just give them the sense of tradition. Um, we help them register for classes. A big part of being a start leader is showing students around OSU and helping them get a feel for what it's like when they're here at Oregon State. We serve to help them make a more smooth and positive transition from high school life to college life and to everything involved with it. And welcome back, Beaver Nation, to another episode of the Beaver Sports Show. I'm your host, Logan McGinnis. And I'm your host, Jake McGrady. It's another week to dig into some more Beaver sports action. And, uh, Jake, we're not talking about mammoths. Uh, let's get it right into some Oregon State football news. It has recently been announced that freshman quarterback Seth Collins will be transferring out of Oregon State. Yep. And uh, as of right now, Seth Collins hasn't announced where he'll be attending school, but... That does leave the team with uh, four options at yeah, quarterback yep. position. So the Beavs got Marcus McMarion, Daryl Garrettson, Mason Moran, and it has been recently scouted by our archaeologist team, the uh, OSU Mammoth. Man, the Mammoth naked appears <laughs> left and right. All right, all right, Jake, we've, uh, maybe we've gone a little bit too far with probably, the Mammoth jokes. Probably, probably. On a more serious note, though, this is going to be a transition period for the Beavers, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, and uh, a little surprise by the news, uh, seeing that Seth did play in the Civil War as a featured weapon. So moving forward, the Beavers have a lot of talent to work with, and it's going to be pretty interesting, you know, when spring ball rolls around to see uh, who they start to roll with. Yep, and so moving uh, forward, let's get into another sport that's not currently in session, but it will be very soon. It's Beaver Baseball. Beaver Baseball, indeed. Beaver Baseball will start February 19th in Arizona versus Ball mm -hmm. State. The Beavers are ranked fifth in the preseason polls to open up the 2016 season, which is the highest in all of Pac-12. So. Yep, and uh, K.J. Harrison, uh, the star first baseman for the Beavers, has been named to the preseason All-American first team. Uh, Harrison batted 309 as a freshman in 2015, collecting a Pac-12 high 60 RBIs to go along with 10 dingers. Oh, yeah. Can't wait to be back in Goss Stadium. It's going to be fun for sure. Yeah, wait. yeah. and uh, so in the meantime, Gil Coliseum, it's been popping. Yeah, it has. Uh, Wayne Tinkle celebrated his uh, 50th B-Day here on Monday. So, BSS, coach, we wish you a happy birthday. Uh, I hope Wayne uh, safely turned up with, you know, with the fam, had some fun there because 21st-ranked USC rolled into Gil on Sunday to face the Beavs. Let's mm -hmm. roll those highlights. Let's do it. Uh, Drew Eubanks with the shot, but GP2, putback slam. GP2 had one of his best well-rounded games of the season so far. And uh, you see uh, USC had their share of dunks. Uh, Nito with the slam there. But GB2 says, jump man, jump man, jump man. Woo! Look at that man fly there right there, Jake. Exactly. GP2 can do it all like a Swiss army off. He disses off to Trace for the and one. Here it is with another assist. Malcolm soars up. Dunks right there with that slammy whammy. Whammy. Beavers with the ball movement. Can't beat that. Trace from downtown right there. Downtown. Deep downtown like Malcolm right there. Yep, and to answer it, you know, the big man, Olaf Schaffenar, says, hey, I want to get into the action. Splash! Olaf, with the trace of his own. Man, Netherlands, stand up. But Stewart from USC responds with a three of his own. However, it wasn't enough, as USC takes the feet to the Beavs, 85-70. to 70. Af And afterwards, afterwards, we got GP2 and Coach Tinkle, who talked about the victory. I think of beauty. You know, they're a good team. Uh, there's a reason that they're ranked. Um, you know, we, we let them back in it a little bit late. Um, but um, then we responded with, uh, with uh, under four minutes to go to put it away. So super proud of our guys with our back against the wall for coming out. And, and especially this guy, GP2, the way he came out and led us with his energy on both ends, playmaking on the offensive end. Um, and, and when he brings that fire, you saw the other guys follow. No, I just, just getting back to being aggressive from the start, you know, just uh, try to spark us. And uh, today it did, and it, uh, everybody else followed, so I was just, just being myself. This past weekend, Logan and I had the chance to head out to the Whiteside Theater in downtown Corvallis to catch up with a Beaver Sports Show alumni, Alex Crawford, for his documentary, The Legend of the Giant Killers. Alex Crawford and Riley Hay showcased their film, The Legend of the Giant Killers, in downtown Corvallis to a full house at the Whiteside Theater. The film highlights OSU's legendary 1967 team that beat the number one Trojans. 
Crawford is an OSU alum that wanted to tell this moment in OSU football history through the giant killer's eyes. This is a two year long process. Uh, the beginning was fundraising, um, getting, you know, going on this treasure hunt to find the giant killers, the materials, the game film, the programs, the pictures, everything. And now I have this like treasure trove of old materials in my file cabinet in my room and it's awesome. Um, but the beginning was just trying to get people to believe in the film and, and to give us money to make this film, to give us this opportunity. But it wasn't so simple for the young filmmakers. First roadblock was that our fundraising campaign failed. Uh, we didn't get nearly as enough of what we needed to make the whole film, but we did get enough to start. So we started doing about six interviews of some of the players and then used that footage to raise the rest of the funding to make the whole movie. You could say the inspiration for this project hit close to home. Uh, the inspiration came from my dad. Um, the first game he ever went to, the first Beaver game he ever went to was 1967, November 11th that game against USC. He actually saved his scrapbook from that game, his program, his tickets, newspaper clippings, and gave that to me. We've gotten to know these guys and we've kind of become part of their brotherhood, which is incredible. And here tonight in Corvallis with the giant killers there, hearing people laugh at certain parts, seeing people cry at certain parts. I mean, that's what this is all about. Jake McGrady reporting, KBVR Sports. It was a lot of fun for Logan and I to get out there and watch the film. Look out for Alex and Riley's film to be showing on the Pac-12 Network sometime in the near future. Yep, Pac-12 Networks, that's huge. And uh, after this commercial break, we're going to have a special sit-down segment with Barometer Sports editor Brian Rathbone. Stay tuned. <laughs> Our generation has been described in many terms, yet the ones that stand out are lazy, entitled, and overall unambitious. But are we? We are the future leaders of innovation, and it's time to come out behind the screen. I know you've heard it all before, that college students are faced with an abundance of rising debt. But what if there was a way to save thousands of dollars every year? Would you do it? Our generation is the lowest voter demographic. In 2014, a U.S. Census stated that the number one reason we did not vote is because we're too busy. Yet, for the minutes it takes to vote, we spend seven and a half hours in front of a screen daily. Politicians are not likely to represent the ideals and beliefs of the lowest voter demographic. Apart, change is near impossible. Yet, if we work together, they could not ignore our acknowledgement. Students and parents, tuition is rising every year, so do something about it. Unemployment is rising every year, so do something about it. If you don't like something in your legislation, do something about it. Voting is the key to change, and together we can break the cycle and change history. Do something about it. back Beaver Nation we have Barometer Sports Editor Brian Rathbone with, with us today. Brian how you doing? Let's talk a little OSU football. Doing great. Um, so All right so I know we did talk about it earlier but we just want to get your take on the Seth Collins transfer situation. How's it gonna affect you know what are the outcomes of it? I think it's a good move kind of for both parties you know for him he gets an opportunity to play quarterback which is you know what he really wants to do and it's also good for Oregon State now that they don't have you know, kind of that lingering like quarterback yeah. controversy going on. Um, I think it's a, you know, it'll benefit them moving forward. Um, he was kind of thrown into a bad situation here. He was a, you know, a you know two-star recruit coming, you know, right out of high school, and he's expected to be kind of the the face of this turnaround. Yeah. And so I think you know, it was not not the best situation for him to be in. That's mm -hmm. for sure. So now looking forward, what QB do you see uh, going with the Beavers next season? If I had to put my money on it, I'd, I'd go with uh, Daryl Garrettson. He mm -hmm. kind of has the, he, the, 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 the teammates really have really, you know, kind of bought into him. Yeah. And he kind of has those leadership mentalities that, or, yeah, those leadership uh, capabilities that, you know, Sean Mannion had when he was here. And so when he's, you know, if you can get that out of him, then that's al always a plus. Yeah. And uh, so you, you mentioned Garrettson. So what, 
Um, maybe Mason Moran, uh, upcoming freshman, along with Marcus McMarion. What are maybe some pros and cons if, if we started them as well? Um, well, well, let's start with Marcus. I mean, he you know saw some time last year, mm -hmm. uh, had the start in the Civil War, had a really good second half in the Civil War, was really efficient, you know, moving the offense, scored uh, 35 points in the half. Mm -hmm. um, but when we saw him th throughout the rest of the 2015 you know, season, it, he didn't really show much. He was, you know, pretty inconsistent. He's kind of thrown into some yeah. bad situations where he couldn't really succeed. Um, yeah. So, and then with Mason Moran, you know, unless he just comes in as, you know, gangbusters, yeah. then uh, there, there's no need to, to start him. Mm -hmm. So the Beebs do have the new defensive coordinator hire in Kevin Clune. What are your uh, sort of first impressions on that? I think it's a good hire. Um, it's a, it's a safe hire. They're not really at a point where they need to revamp the entire defense. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, getting – you know the players that they need and you know growing comfortable within the system and uh and uh, coach anderson's you know very familiar with kevin clune they work together at, at utah mm -hmm. utah state and uh southern utah so i think it's a good hire is i think it'll it'll work out as well. best as you know yeah yeah, yeah it'll be good uh so one last question for you here brian uh signing day is coming up so what are some holes or any key positions that the beavers need to fill well, one of the, the big areas of focus has been on, on the defensive side of the ball, mm -hmm. getting, you know, pass rushers and, you know, more defensive backs. Um, I think like 16 of the 24 that have, you know, given their verbal commitments are on the defensive side. Um, they've also gone heavy with the, uh, the JC players. I think they already have six, mm -hmm. you know, that have given their, their verbal. And, you know, that's more than I think the previous three years that of Mike Riley had combined. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Well, uh, Brian. Thanks for coming on. Short segment. We'll get you on longer. We'll get you a longer segment. So thanks for coming on the show. Uh, look for Brian's articles in the Daily Barometer. And stay tuned after this for a break for a familiar face in the OSU Beaverdale. <laughs> We're here to answer any questions, escort students around. We really just give them the sense of tradition. Um, we help them register for classes. A big part of being a start leader is showing students around OSU and helping them get a feel for what it's like when they're here at Oregon State. We serve to help them make a more smooth and positive transition from high school life to college life and to everything involved with it. So, as we said, welcome back, guys. For the past four years, you may have seen a familiar face in the OSU Beaver Dam, and that would be the president of the Beaver Dam, Jeff Lule. Take a peek. For the last four years, you may have seen a regular face appear in the Oregon State student section. That would be Jeff Lule, the president of the OSU Beaver Dam. Lule, a senior at OSU, has risen the Beaver Dam into an organized group and a student club on campus. However, the Beaver Dam Club didn't even exist until 2012 when Lule took the call to action. It was easy seeing as we didn't have anything when I showed up here. We had no Beaver Dam, we had nothing. That allowed for me to really open up my creativity and just excel. Uh, I started about making social media posts. I started meeting the athletic department. It was a very slow process. And then once the ball started rolling, um, it was, you know, took care of itself. The Beaver Dam group has come a long way since 2012. Lule has worked with athletics to spread the Beaver Dam logo through towels and shirts, along with getting a sponsorship from McDonald's. As far as the organization of the Beaver Dam goes and the structure of the club, it was relatively casual to begin. Um, as I said, we didn't have a foundation. It was new, and it started with myself and four other individuals. To help Beaver Nation get hyped for the fourth quarter during home football games, Lule was the man for the job. I was lucky enough to get that opportunity to be the mic guy, the hype man for the fourth quarter. And a lot of people talk about these butterflies they get before kickoff or game day. Those are my butterflies. I was able to go into research, turn it up with my friends and the other students. Student athletes appreciate the motivation from the crowd. Oregon State quarterback Marcus McMahon. You know, sorry guys, we just didn't have enough time for this package. But maybe next week, stay tuned. We'll show it at the very start of the show. And uh, for Beaver News and Beaver Sports Show, I'm Logan McGinnis. And I'm Jake McGrady. Go Beavs and good night. Thanks for tuning in.